Y'all hate me so much more than y'all hate my husband. Like, y'all was in that. They went berserks. Over the past year, there have been many new efforts to support black-owned businesses. But some say this prosper couple here took advantage of that. The FTC and the state of Texas are suing LaShonda and Marlon Moore, claiming they scammed millions from members of the black community. How I almost got caught and how I kind of went, nah, ain't no way. It gotta be a previous game. This whole situation was only for people of color, African American. So basically uh, they preyed on the African American community, allegedly. During uh, a worldwide pandemic. pandemic, you guys. If you said anything bad about them, you risk the chance of not getting your money back. In today's world, social media has become a dominant force in shaping our lives, especially when it comes to relationships. Around early 2010s, the rise of online couples began flooding our feeds with cute content to flat out degradation. Nonetheless, people have developed a fascination with these seemingly perfect relationships, often tagging them with hashtag couple goals or relationship goals. From living vicariously through celebrity couples to jumping into a relationship just for watching their favorite influencers, the pursuit of being associated with these hashtags has become a popular trend. There's couples who resort to stupid shit for clicks and views. And then there's those who use their followers as cash cows, exploiting their fames to make money. Often by selling useless products or services that are little to no value or outright fraudulent completely scamming their followers of thousands of dollars. I can't stand them the most. This kind of behavior is unethical and can be harmful to their followers who would most likely be misled or taken advantage of. We've all seen the different types of couple content flooding our feeds, and I always make sure I go out of my way to either block them or mute them. <laughs> Not because I'm single, I'm in a happy relationship, but it's because when I look at it, I just know that it's bullshit. However, as with anything on social media, we need to be more conscious of what we see and trust. The dangers of idolizing influencer couples is that they can't always be trusted, and some have even gone as far as using their celebrity status to commit affinity fraud while scamming their followers. And with that being said, we're going to focus our attention to Marlon DeAndre Moore and LaShonda Moore, famously referred to as a prosperity couple who are facing allegations of committing affinity fraud by scamming their followers through what appeared to be a pyramid scheme. Their business, Bent LLC, which stood for blessings and no time is at the center of two ongoing investigation, one by the state of Texas and the other by the FTC and the state of Arkansas. So join me as we explore the impact of affinity fraud on social media, the dangers of trusting influencers, and the case of Marlon DeAndre Moore and LaShonda Moore, who were accused of scamming their followers using their business, Bent LLC. But before we move forward, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button. And I'm almost there at a thousand, so, <laughs> so definitely support me by hitting that subscribe button and also the like button so that we can get the algorithm moving. Now, let's begin. Born as Marlon DeAndre Maiden, then later changing his last name to Moore, like many of us, he grew up in humble beginnings in Shreveport, Louisiana. As a youngster, he had a love for music and would spend hours downloading songs and making mixed CDs. Man, that takes me back. I used to do the same thing back then. I used to download from Napster, make a bunch of mixed CDs, and then sell them in high school for like $5 a CD. Download them when I get home, and then start burning them um, on my old, uh, I think I had XP back in the days, no XP. Man, that was back in the days, boy. <laughs> Moving forward. However, as he got older, he realized that just burning CD wasn't gonna make ends meet. So he took a job selling insurance at Liberty Mutual. Till one day, a friend asked Marlon if he'll be able to DJ at a house party that she was throwing. He thought it would be a piece of cake thinking that burning CDs was similar to turning table. <laughs> So he bought a whole bunch of DJ equipment and took the job, but he soon realized that it was much harder than he thought. In this article, he described the experience as being horrible. Despite the rough start, Marlon enjoyed the experience and decided to quit his insurance job, then later move into Texas to pursue his passion for DJ, which I commend because I like it when people get out their comfort zone to follow their passion and their dreams, so I can actually support his decision. He took the craft seriously and adopted the moniker DJ ASAP, which also stood for always serve a purpose. 
Through hard work and dedication, Marlon became one of the top local DJs in Houston, Texas. He would pass out mixtape at the end of every gig to promote himself, which actually helped him at the end because it caught the attention of BET executives. Now, Marlon was very talented at what he did, and his skills alone got him a chance to be resident DJ at BET's top show, Win on Sixth and Park. He worked there from Monday to Fridays between 2011 and 2014. But when the show was canceled, he had to find new ways to make the most of his exposure. Lucky for him, he learned everything about production scenes while working at BET One of Six Park. So he started hosting his own events with his former colleagues from the show. He went from earning $500 to $800 per gig as a local DJ, then quickly moving on to throw his own events, making a whopping $8,000 to $10,000 per event. But you see, that wasn't enough for him. Nah, Marlon wanted to be seen as a mogul. He even went by the name DJ ASAP the Mogul and had the Mogul Behavior logo tatted on his jacket. In this article, it also states that he formed his own promotional collective team called Team ASAP using cool guerrilla marketing techniques to build his own brand. He also launched his own A&R in North of Texas, while at the same time going on tour with famous hip hop and R&B artists. I gotta say that Marlon's ambition and hard work are truly inspiring me, especially when you consider the accusation thrown his way. Despite all that, Marlon kept pushing forward and you gotta respect him for that. Nonetheless, we can't ignore the elephant in the room because Marlon's ambition and desire for fame may have caused him to prioritize his own success and image over the well-being of others, leading him to engage in unethical and illegal behavior to achieve his own goals. He was more focused on his own success and how people saw him instead of caring about others. His self-centered attitude and love for showing off probably contributed to this behavior. In the end, his actions showed that his actions affected others and that it's dangerous to be obsessed with yourself and your goals. Now we're going to shift our attention to LaShonda Moore, born as LaShonda Stillmill Conley, a very attractive young lady who, in my opinion, have been attacked by a lot of people on the internet, mostly due to her outspoken personality. My energy, like, if I'm pissed off, you're going to feel it. Oh, she got a mouth on her. She's known to get easily triggered when she feels like she's being attacked. And I know a lot of women who act this way. <laughs> a lot of bark, but no bite. Stay in drama. I ain't saying she's drama, but I'm just saying my boy Marlon had to check her and tell her to chill out a few times. You always be trying to give them all the I'm news. trying to win them back over because there's so many of them no, that don't no, no, like no, no, no. me. Forget winning people, man. If they don't like you, they don't like you. And you ain't nothing you can do about that, all right? You so say just, that because you don't get talked about how I do. People talk about me too. I don't care. They talked about Jesus. And, and look at it. How, can I say this? Song? No. Hold on, listen. I'm not going to say it. Mm. When it is time for us to tell them those other two pieces of good news, can I be the deliverer of that? They still ain't going to like you. <laughs> <laughs> they still ain't going to like you. And all the other uh, platforms start ringing. Then they going to praise your name. But you still... When we start off, we're going to full boards. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Get out. Go to your room. Go to your, go to room. your room. Go to your room. That's just one. There's a second one. No. <laughs> but I digress. You see, LaShonda was a hardworking single mother of two from Arkansas. And before meeting Marlon, she was a real estate agent. And that's pretty much it. That's not really much information or history when it comes to LaShonda. She pretty much lived a regular life before meeting Marlon. And I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for him, she wouldn't have this much exposure that she has now. Now, in my observation, I noticed that she possesses a tendency to occasionally divert the spotlight from Marlon. While Marlon exudes a more composed and collected demeanor, LaShonda, on the other hand, is characterized to be more boisterous and outspoken in nature. For, for her, I think it's just how she handles things sometimes. You know, like, you can get mad, um, but see, me, my, our personality is totally different. Like, I'm more laid back, mm -hmm. and she's more like the firecracker. So give it, give it they truly are polar opposites of each other, and while they may complement each other in some ways, I couldn't help but perceive LaShonda as more of a disruption than a value addition in Marlon's life. As we delve further into this analysis, you will come to understand the nuance I'm referring to, meaning that LaShonda is fucking annoying. So let's focus on the couple overall. The two met in the summer of 2017 as sparks already started flying. 
Fast forward to October 2018, Ashonda organized a surprise party for Marlon. But little did she know, Marlon had a surprise of his own, a proposal at the end of the night. After that magical moment, the two was able to seal their engagement as soon to be husband and wife. And you guys will be able to witness this full story because the two end up going on a TV reality show called Family and Fiance in 2019 which aired in early 2020. The show follows engaged couples as they bring their families together for three intense days of relationship counseling before their upcoming weddings. They go on a bunch of exercises like therapy sessions, team building activities, and discussions on tough topics like money, kids, and intimacy. The ultimate goal is to help the couple and their families work through any issues and figure out if they're truly ready for their big day. And again, I'm gonna have to go back to our girl Shondo, who was not favorable on Marlon's friends and family, especially Marlon's homeboy who made a comment, a slick comment about Lashonda's baby girls. That stuff bothers me. He made a comment about my child. He referenced her to be ugly. He says it wasn't in that he, context, but yes, the hell it was. That's he, how I took it. He didn't it. say ugly or what having he that He didn't context. use those words. He didn't use those words. I'm going to say this. If you're the homie, bruh, don't talk about my girl's kids. I ain't with that. No, I'm not a simp, but at the same time, I'm not going to let the homie dog on my girl's kids. Kids. On the other hand, when it comes to my family's opinion about my girls, I'm gonna have to sit down and hear them out. It is what it is. And by watching some of these clips, I could see that Marlon's family was not too keen on him marrying an old girl. I personally never watched the show, it ain't my cup of tea, but I can see some red flags when it came to LaShonda. Not only that she's a single mom and Marlon have no kids, but people can pick up on her energy. I'm getting borderline narcissism vibe coming from old girl, but then again, a lot of these modern ladies all suffering from borderline narcissism always want to be the center of attention. Delusions of grandeur, if you ask me. And on August 9th, the two end up tying the knot in what was described the party of a decade for summer weddings. It was a pretty big elaborate wedding if you were, if I were to say so myself, because there were a whole bunch of fireworks, custom logos, a Rolex cake designed by a London baker, and an aerialist? An aerialist, guys? Okay, who paid for this wedding? Was it Oprah? Was it the show? Nonetheless, it seemed like everybody was having Having a good time and I'm actually happy that they were able to enjoy that one day because things started to fall afterwards. You see, the couple was on the up and up, and I guess that they were pushing forward as the celebrity couples doing interview, photo shoots, traveling state to state to promote themselves. And from the outside looking in, they actually look like a good pair, you know? I can see Marlon's genuine love for this woman shining through. He's even proudly declared that he inherited four little sisters two little brothers, two nephews, and two beautiful daughters. To all the unappreciative women out there, take notes of this remarkable man. Always talking about there ain't no good man out there. Well, y'all don't know how to catch one. A man who doesn't even have any kids of his own, yet he chooses to build a meaningful relationship with a single mom. Now let's not get caught up on her looks because a lot of y'all females out there are getting BBLs and all of these artificial enhancements and yet y'all still struggle to find a truly good partner. It's sad and a little funny, <laughs> a little bit funny, but you know, it's sad. Also, they even discuss Marlon's consideration of adopting LaShonda's daughters during their conversation on the Breakfast Club radio show. The show makes it look like it's a concern to do it without consent. I think like when his mom brought it up and it's never been a problem until I got with Dre mm -hmm. and he seen Dre was something serious. My kid's father haven't been around in four years. He was gone before Dre got here. So that's where the adoption thing comes in. It's not like we're trying to replace somebody. He's not an active yeah. father financially. His presence isn't there. Now, let me say this, bruh. One thing I didn't like is their attempt to adopt the kids without the consent of the biological father. Their reasoning is that he's not involved with the girl's life, essentially labeling him as a deadbeat. I cannot confirm if that's true. However, I would like to make a point. As a father of two children from two different women, one of my sons is a teenager and I've had unofficial custody of him since he was four. My second son lives in another state, so I don't really get to see him as often. However, that doesn't give my second child's mom the right to allow a new partner to adopt my son simply because I'm not physically present or if her new man makes more money than me. Like, what the fuck? 
Didn't Sierra try to do the same shit with Future? Also, Marlon, bruh, you going with it too. I have the feeling that this may not have been your idea, but I could be mistaken. Who knows? But seriously, man, be cautious. Honestly, I'll tell you not to do it. You need to watch the lead attorney on YouTube channel. I always watch his show. He's pretty entertaining, but he give out some good game because, oh girl, you know, despite her attractiveness, Lashonda appears to be the type of person who might blow up the spot and create trouble. Also, expose sensitive information. Even after being instructed to keep things confidential, she's kind of stubborn and it's not the kind of temperament that lends itself well to doing business with together. As a result, divorce is still a possibility to be honest and you certainly don't want to be put on child support for kids who are not biologically yours. However, it's disheartening to see that once they find a financially well-off man, they're quickly to disregard the biological father and replace him with the new nigga. So I'm definitely not feeling this clip right here on the breakfast club anyway in my opinion the whole concept of being a celebrity couple is overrated to be honest the whole idea of relationship goal or idolizing others people relationship is dead and it's also dangerous and detrimental to us because we all know it's not perfect i think it's better to keep your relationship private because let's face it everyone argues and fight they just don't put it online to be honest i'd rather watch that because it's more authentic not none of that blue face and Kashan Rock kind of thing. I don't want to watch that. That's just toxic right there. But back to the Moors. Things started to take a turn after they were accused of running an investment scam called Bent. Blessings in no time. Not a good look. But before we start talking about the Bent scam, I want to ask you guys again to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, please like, share, and subscribe as we move on to the next session of this story. It'll be greatly appreciated. So support your boy, guys. And also, thank you in advance. Love you. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. Officials now say more than 400 people have been sickened and nine people have died. The breaking news, stay at home. That is the order tonight from four state governors as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut all ordering non-essential employees to stay home. Those orders cover 75 million people across the United States. New York's governor today telling non-essential businesses in his state to reduce their workforce to zero. Midnight tonight, the Mexican border will join our northern border and also close to all but essential travel. The undocumented will not be allowed to cross. But we're not sending them to Mexico. We're sending them back to their own countries. Goldman Sachs now estimates that this week, two and a quarter million Americans filed for their first week of unemployment. Have you ever heard the saying, when people are desperate, they do desperate things? I said this because the Moors and many Americans were hit with the devastating effects of C-19 epidemic. The 2020 pandemic had massive impacts on people's lives with widespread illness, death, economic hardship, and social disruption. With stores and businesses closed and events canceled, many people were forced to stay at home and rely on the internet for information and entertainment. Unfortunately, this also created an environment of fraudulent activities to thrive. One example was the PPP loan. A man will be sentenced this morning for his role in a PPP loan fraud scheme worth more than $2.8 million. Federal prosecutors say a St. Louis County businessman, uh, Chris Carroll and George Reed abused that paycheck protection program by using the money to start a new company and keep the rest for themselves instead of paying their employees. People were creating fake LLC so that they can get the $20,000, then end up being arrested or owing the money back. There are also cases where scammers providing false information on the loan application to receive the money themselves, leaving small business owners responsible of paying back the loan. And this led to a surge of fraudulent activities during the pandemic. The Blessings in No Time scam, which was concocted by the Moors, was a classic example of how people took advantage of the situation to scam others. The Moors lured individuals into their pyramid scheme by promising them quick cash and financial freedom taking advantage of their vulnerabilities and fears during the pandemic. They relied on social media to spread their scam, targeting individuals who were looking for ways to make money during that time. Vince promised people $11,000 for their initial investment of $1,400, 
a participant will require to recruit others to join the scheme to earn their money. So the way the scheme worked, after signing up and joining Bent, members participated in something called a blessing room, where payments are coordinated between members using playing boards. Bent's playing boards has four levels. These levels are called fire, wind, earth, and water respectively. Each level has different requirements and responsibilities for the members involved. The first level, the fire level, is furthest from the center of the board and typically contain eight new members. These members are required to send a payment called a blessing to the member at the center of the board, the water. The amount of the blessing is usually around 1400 or more. The second level, the wind level, has the responsibility of recruiting two new members. The third level, the earth level, typically has two members. They have the responsibility of recruiting two new members or paying a fee to have new members added. Like the wind level, they can also request Ben to provide them their required recruits free of charge. The fourth and final level, the water level, is the center of the board and there is only one member on this level. This level receives all the blessings from the members on the first level. Once all the board positions are filled, the board splits into two new boards and the process repeats. Overall, the levels in the bin scheme represents different roles and responsibility for the members involved with each level requiring specific actions to keep the scheme going. Some of the former members who came out to tell the story viewed the program as an enjoyable game. There's sort of a gaming aspect to it. People love games. It was definitely intriguing and interesting. And it was kind of fun, you know, for a little while. <laughs> As evident to the diagram before you, the loom had a distinctive pyramid structure and functioned similarly to a pyramid scheme. Individuals positioned higher up in the pyramid received larger portion of the payments made by those positioned lower down. Conversely, those situated at the bottom of the pyramid typically received little to no compensation and may have even suffered losses. Also, understand that they refer to payments as blessings. Not investments, not deposits, not even payments, but blessings. You will get your blessings. Everyone will receive their blessings. You have to wait for your blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Don't you mean my fucking money? Later in the video, I'll try to explain why I feel like they referred it as blessings rather than payments, but let me continue. So Bent is actually based on an old African tradition called a susu. It's a savings plan that's popular in many Caribbean countries as well as places like Africa or even South America. The idea behind it is that a group of trusted individuals, trusted individuals, usually family members or people from the church come together to pull their money in. Everyone has to keep contributing until the cycle is over. For example, you have five individuals in a group. Lex, Bray, Sarah, Mike, and Fiona. We all put $100 in a pot. We then take turn on who gets the pot every week. This week, I get the money, which is $500. But here's the thing. I have to keep contributing $100 every week, even after I receive the money. Next, Bree get the $500 and then so on and so on and so on until the cycle is over. You don't stop contributing the $100 after you receive the payout. That's how it's supposed to work. In the Haitian community, we call it an ESO. My mom still does it to this day. But here's the thing. What the Moors were trying to do was not a susu. They were operating more like a pyramid scheme. The reason why I say that is because you can receive the payout and get out whenever you want it. You didn't have to keep contributing after you received the payout. Therefore, older members had to rely on newer members to get in in order to receive whatever payout that they were promised, which was, I believe, about $11,000. Members were given something called the Bits Bible, which had some interesting clauses, such as all members had to have family friends friendly headshot profiles and absolutely no posting about Ben or anything related to Ben on social media. When I read this, I found this a bit odd that a legitimate business would not want their members to post or promote their businesses on social media. So that right there should have been a red flag, but I can see why a lot of people didn't see that, especially if you don't know about these things. What's also in the Bent Bible written in bold letter is that all members had to be African-American descent and absolutely no exceptions. When I saw this, a few questions came in mind. At first, I thought about this might be an exclusionary club to build up the black community. However, I now find myself questioning their true intentions. It appears that they have taken advantage of the black community by exploiting our struggles. 
Considering the systematic racism, police brutality, economic inequality, and mass incarceration that black people face in the United States, among other challenges, it's clear that they capitalized on our vulnerabilities. They employ strategic phrases like building the black community, black wealth, and support our own to lure black individuals into their pyramid scheme, promising them wealth. Unfortunately, the people who benefited the most was Marlon and LaShonda, as it was reported that LaShonda allegedly made over $2 million, closing over 170 boards. But now I want to delve into the subject of their marketing tactics. Marlon, the founder of the marketing company Team ASAP, you remember when I told you guys that? He had a background in marketing and described himself as a marketing guru based on his LinkedIn profile. He knew how to appeal to black people using the right words, appealing to their emotions and including religion. Even though LaShonda got most of the flack for the way that she promoted it because I believe that she promoted it more than him. It was Marlon who was the real mastermind behind the whole marketing campaign as the only one with the necessary experience. They used terms like blessings, prayer, Bible, humble, and so on. These were trigger words to convince black people to join Bent because we all know how super religious we can be. First of all, we don't play when it comes to our Lord and Savior. Can I get an amen? But this also means that we're the biggest marks. Just because someone says that this is a gift from God doesn't mean that it is. Just look at Proverbs 14, 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. You don't have to believe everything people pitch to you just because they added a few holy words. And that's why it's crucial to conduct thorough research to avoid falling prey to charlatans like these who promise quick solution to eliminate debt and make you wealthy. But it was too late because people lost their stimulus checks, feeling dismayed and betrayed by these two selfish individuals and their failed venture. It wasn't until things started crashing down where the Moors knew they were in deep trouble. The recruitment started to slow down. New members weren't being recruited, therefore no money was coming in, and since no money was coming in, people already in the group were not getting paid. After months, members already deposited their $1,400 into Ben were not seeing any returns. Afraid that they were going to lose their initial $1,400 deposit, people started asking for a refund. You see, allegedly the Moors promised a money-back guarantee policy. Although I couldn't really find any information on it, it was alleged that it was promised via Zoom meeting. Members wanted to blast them on social media, but were hesitant. Because here written in bold letters, violation of membership requirements could result in any of the following disciplinary actions in combination. A written and or verbal warning, 30 day suspension, refund of current position will be given and no new board replacements for 30 days. Permanent termination, refund could be forfeited, forfeiture of initial investment or blessing sent or blessing to be received. So a lot of people kept their mouths shut because they either wanted to make their money back or they didn't want to lose the money that they already put in. And that sucks, and I really do feel bad for a lot of those people. Once the flood of refunds requests started pouring in because members were not getting blessed due to the lack of new recruits, the more scrambled to salvage the situation with damage control tactics. They assured everyone that refunds would be issued. Okay, what everybody wants to know about. Everybody wants to know what's going on with the refunds, right? Everybody wants to know what's going on. I can't get the list of the. I, I've tried to get a refund. I put in for a refund. Guys, we are working, actively working all refunds. Mm -hmm. they, we had a refund list. And before that refund list got too long, we wanted to say, hey, let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and take care of the people that are on the refund list right now. And we've been actively taking care of all the people on the refund list. You guys also have to remember, guys, we're dealing with banks. When we're dealing with banks, we have to deal with limits. Anytime there's a limits issue, we can only send a certain amount out per day, per week, per month. So uh, for a while, we hit our limits uh, for November. And so now our limits are back open. We're back working uh, with the with the refunds. So just just to let you guys know, refunds are still being taken care of. If you did not make it on the refund list before, it's okay. It'll be open as soon as we get these other refunds handled and out the way. But they urged members to continue recruiting in the meantime. However, when recruitment efforts failed to gain traction, the Moors resorted to attacking their own members for not recruiting quickly enough. This reprehensible behavior persisted for weeks until the Moors came up with a terrible idea. They declared that members must now pay a monthly fee of $85. The audacity. Can you believe it? 
Not only were members denied refunds, but they were also burdened to pay a monthly fee. This move was allegedly intended to facilitate refunds to older members, a suggestion attributed by the fellow right here, Nehemiah Thompson, the individual behind the so-called app Connect Me. Connect Me was a group chat app members including the Moors had to download and use, which required the members who used the app to pay a subscription fee of $85. Mind you, I said a subscription fee of $85. Yes, the $85 was not being used to reimburse members. Instead, it went to Nehemiah's pockets. Hey guys, my name is Nehemiah Thompson. I am the uh, partners in with Bent and we are developing a great, great, great tool. And I want to give y'all a quick like update on how things are going as we are cleaning up this uh, data. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of cleanup that's needed. And so I just wanted to show y'all what is happening behind the scenes as we're working towards making everyone's lives easier when it comes to uh, enjoying this experience of getting these blessings. So I'm going to sign in and show y'all a quick example of what's glowing on so as i sign in you see me right there i'm just hanging out in the office space right here but i'm gonna move over a little but this is where you guys are gonna live right here okay i'm gonna move my face over here but man when i say closed boards active boards ready to split boards i just want to show y'all quickly on what the pictures and everything is looking like so you see it's pulling the data and it's going to show all the active boards that are ready to go um, and I'm just going to keep clicking down. Let's just say, here we go. We got Montreal. You see Montreal's faces right here. We got it listed as a spark. And again, this is just uh, data that we're, you know, we're working in, uh, with. It's going to show your member ID. So you guys are going to have member numbers attached to your things. And it's going to show Montreal's on 17 boards. Again, this is just dummy data as we're cleaning up the real data. But I just wanted to show y'all what's happening behind the scenes for you guys and as if that wasn't enough concerns arose about the app itself well at least in the moore's eyes written here with access to connect me we uncover all the boards that showcase the numerous spots where the moors their family and friends and their admins were being blessed connect me revealed the true scale of the community including the members of the people eagerly awaiting their turn to participate the sparks and it exposed how the more strategically placed their acquaintances on different boards without our knowledge. This new revelation raised further question and fueled our growing sense of distrust. Our concerns and inquiries were met with silence. As the more tightly controlled the narrative, the Bent community, the Bent band, and all of its subgroups. This followed up with heated arguments between Bent community members and the Moors. This also led to their association with Nehemiah and the app Connect Me to come to an end and part ways, leading to even deeper mistrust within the Bent community. Now you might be wondering, didn't the Moors make millions? Shouldn't they have funds set aside for refunds? Surely they had to have some sort of insurance. The unfortunate reality is that they did not. Despite their desperate attempt to clean everything up. When you're in that blessing position, you're gonna say 700 to the water. testimony, which is the wind. I'm sorry, the testimony, which is the water. Now he messed. No, could you mess? Let me talk. And on January 2021, during a Zoom meeting, they were forced to come clean and admit that their administrative bank account for the refunds had been depleted. And of course it has been. They have been going on trips and skydiving and doing all these things on social media. So of course their money wasn't there. Therefore, no one had any rights to a refund. And if that wasn't worse, they were going to do a hard reset. Basically start all over again. They were going to reset the debts, money made, money owed, everything. Start all over again. And they tried to make it seem like it was a good thing. But trust me, guys, when any company tries to do a hard reset, that means that they know they owe you money, but don't want any paper trails or receipts. Since no one was getting a refund, that's when people just said screw it and screw the policy, the no-tell policy, and began exposing the Morris and Bent LLC for the scam it was, which caught the attention of the FTC and the state of Texas to step in. The state of Texas and the FTC began interviewing former members and victims who lost their money. They were able to gather enough complaints from the affidavit that you see before you of people giving their testimony of Bent. This victim and her testimony explained how the Moors used to seek celebrity connection, fear, grief, and trauma from the 2020 riot 
I'm guessing George Floyd riot and scam over 8,000 black people. Going on to say that Ben LLC was presented as a godly, all black, socially conscious gifting the community that came about on the tail end of a lot of this past summer protest. During their investigation, if you look here, the state of Texas did not contact the couple right away, concerned the couple may move and conceal assets and destroy evidence, which they were right because allegedly bank records that were obtained of defendant LaShonda Moore showing deposits from Bench Operation LLC and dissipation of those assets as well as transactions related to a cryptocurrency. Allegedly, LaShonda was moving the money that she made from Bench around. And guys, everything has a digital footprint, so it's kind of hard to move money around secretly without the state knowing. So the state had to obtain a temporary restraining order issuing an ex parte temporary restraining order with asset freeze and granting the state's request to expedite discovery and setting a hearing on the state's request for a temporary injunction. The state even explained why they believe that it was a pyramid scheme here. Due to compensation that was derived primarily from a person's introduction of other persons to participate in the plan or operation rather than from the sale of a product by a person introduced into the plan or operation. The state was also able to gather other evidences such as bentscam.com which is still up if you guys want to check it out to prove their case in court. The court proceeding is still ongoing and I hope the victims of Marlon and LaShonda Moore get the justice that they deserve. Also in BBB.org, the Better Business Bureau, they're getting a lot of hate from customers i'm talking about 37 customer complaints of them just talking about how much this thing was just a scam people who are very unhappy with it they've been also given an f rating for their business practice bent was destined to fall and the way that everything was handled the way that it ran i'm surprised that it even lasted for a year now before I wrap things up, I want to share a final observation. I want to stress that this is just my viewpoint which may not align to the majority, but I urge you to listen and hear me out. After conducting research on this couple, I truly don't believe that they had malicious intent. Although they deceived everyone and profited greatly from their actions, I genuinely think they believe that they could be a positive impact on the black community. At least that seems to be the case for Marlon before he met LaShonda. Marlon actively participated in various community services, displaying a strong commitment to the youth. While some may perceive this as a PR move to enhance his reputation, I say it as genuine and driven by his desire to assist the black community, especially considering his own experience growing up in poverty. Unfortunately, after marrying LaShonda, his intentions seemed to shift more towards monetary gains rather than helping the community. I'm not placing blame solely on LaShonda for his downfall, not at all, but it is important to acknowledge that there are individuals who enjoy impressing their wives. Having someone like LaShonda by his side who seemed short-tempered, difficult, stubbornly vocal, and hard-headed as fuck could have influenced him negatively. Ultimately, their inflated egos led them to believe that they could single-handedly liberate the black community oblivious of the consequences of their actions. Now they must face the consequences of their crimes. With that being said, I want to express my gratitude to all of you who have taken the time to watch my video. If you managed to make it to the end, I sincerely appreciate your support. Now please consider subscribing to my channel and watching my latest video. Until next time guys, love you, peace.